I'm giving this corgi a heart tail. Yes, you heard me right. Her tail is literally going to be turned into a heart. This is Sophia, aka Sophia the First. And while I was bathing her, Raikou just decided to get all dirty, even though I gave him a bath yesterday. So I've done things like this before, but I've never done it on like a corgi's tail. And I looked up some photos online and I saw that people shaved the corgi. And yeah, I'm not doing that. I had to use a lead to hold Sophia up because corgis just love to slam their big voluptuous butt cheeks on the table and i'm trying to be precise here like i'm not trying to give sophia a broken heart normally corgis don't need a lot off but for some reason sophia just has so much like wispy hairs her parents like the nice clean chunky loaf look and sophia definitely has the facilities for that because girl with all due respect you look like a freshly baked loaf of bread and i think her heart tail looks adorable but what do you guys think and sophia is all ready for the holiday season bye sophia Everyone stop moving, stop breathing, the baby is sleeping, this is Bunny and her parents say she's a Pomeranian mix and I can see why they call her a bunny because she loves to nibble on my finger like it's a carrot. So I kind of got this whitening shampoo all over the place and it kind of just looked like a smurf exploded in the bathtub, oops my bad. I feel like another reason why Bunny's name is Bunny is because she loves to stand on her two back legs and hop around. It kind of always freaks me out a little bit when I see dogs walk on their back legs like what are you doing? You are a dog, not a person about to go to their 9 to 5. Bunny sometimes gets offended when I touch her feet, but other than that, she's such a stellar girl for her haircut and pretty much just chillaxes on my table the whole time. I think it's so funny how like half of her face didn't get the memo and so she has like a sneeze of brown fur. And this adorable bunny is all ready to go home. Oh, and you can breathe now. Bye, bunny. I'm giving a haircut to this massive 120 pound giant schnauzer. So this is Frank and he's just a big anxious man and he got me soaking wet for the bath. It was literally snowing today and I was bathing in my chanclas so I don't even know what was going through my mind. Oh and that was his little sister Molly who I am also grooming today. I started off with her because Frank needed a minute to just chillax. If you didn't know I really don't do a lot of schnauzers and this is probably like the fifth one that I've ever done and so I I don't do their eyebrows that often so I'm still working on it but this is the first time I've ever worked on a giant schnauzer and he was a stubborn man after I wrestled this life-size gorilla for his nails I start doing his haircut and he's kind of getting like a modified giant schnauzer pattern I have to work with him getting used to me touching his face but I did have to shave off his chin because it was matted like excuse me mr. Frank you don't have to move your entire body every single time I get near you but yeah his face was like the hardest part because I could hold it for like maybe a good 30 seconds and then he would start tossing me around and can you believe frank is only three it's a work in progress but these two are all done and there's my dog that has to be involved bye frank and molly i did end up getting bit by this sassy senior of a yorkie this is Giabella, and I had no idea that she didn't like a brush or comb near her face until I was in the tub trying to get her eye googies out, and she attacked the comb, like, wild animal style. She had matting on her face, and I was kind of struggling to get it out, as you can see, and y'all, I can't believe that this senior got me. I'm normally, like, so quick with it, but what happened was I had my comb in my hand, and I wasn't gonna use it on her hair, but my finger was right next to it, and I guess she thought I was trying to comb her hair, so she, like, gargled down my finger, and it's, like, swelled up right now. I really did the best I could on her. Like I said, she had matting on her chin and, like, her cheeks and everything, and I couldn't brush or comb it out, obviously, so I just had to cut it out, which is, like, the last thing that I want to do, because when you cut out mats, it just doesn't look right, and it takes forever for the hair to grow back in. But anyways, this chunky watermelon is all ready to go home. Bye, Giabella! My four-month-old puppy is, uh, maturing. This is Raikou, my four-month-old standard poodle puppy, and I'm doing a bath and a little haircut today. Tell me how he looks like a bunny and a bicycle seat at the exact same time. Because my posture is steadily declining like I'm 90 years old, um, I ended up just sitting in the tub with him while I was doing the bath. I'm training Raikou to use this cute little pink poodle pillow. Yes, I said poodle pillow. Um, it's there so they can like lay their long schnout on there while we do prep work before the haircut. I'm still working on banding him. Yeah, I know, there's so many terms, but I basically just put these rubber bands in his hair, and it's to keep the hair out of his eyes and to prevent matting in the future. There was a few lady dogs on the floor, and Raikou was literally drooling and going like ravenous for them. My coworker showed me through the first time doing this haircut, and then this time I'm going over her lines to try and learn. 
It's not perfect, but it's progress, and I'm all about that. Bye, Raikou! Using protection, in all scenarios, is so important, especially when I'm dealing with these super hairy dogs. This is Mozart the German Shepherd, and guys, when I tell you that I've literally gone home and coughed up a hairball before, it's no joke. And the amount of times where I've barbarically dug into my eyes because there's a hair, like, in the upper right corner of my eye, I swear it's always the upper right corner. My dog Raikou loves to swim in all the hair, and he just got a bath today. I pat Mozart down with the secret sauce to help loosen his undercoat. I did already use a D-Shed shampoo and conditioner in the bathtub, but the whole point of that is so it loosens the hair so then I can use my tools to get it out. Mozart seems to really enjoy that too. But one thing he doesn't enjoy is his ears being cleaned. I feel like so many German Shepherds are just sensitive around their ears, so it's understandable. He is seriously the sweetest Shepherd ever though, so I had to introduce him to Raikou. Hugs all around, and he's all done. Bye Mozart! A wild dog was brought in today, and I thought he was a hyena at first. This is Duke, and even though his snaggle tooth makes him look a little wild, he isn't actually a wild dog. This is the first time I've worked with him, and he is very anxious. Recently, separation anxiety and just anxiety in dogs has become more common because a lot of people got dogs over COVID, and they weren't really able to socialize them as well as they should have been. My intrusive thoughts won there, and maybe putting my finger in his mouth wasn't the greatest idea. I used my secret sauce on Duke, which really helps make him shiny and condition his hair. All those wet marks you see on the green mat are, um, literally Duke's slobber. A glob of Duke's slobber did end up launching into my mouth, and that was very not cash money of you, Duke, so hopefully it doesn't, like, also make me grow a snaggletooth. I gave him that bandana, and Duke looks like a grown man ready to go back to his wife and kids. Bye, Duke! It's this adorable corgi's first time at the groomers, and everyone's first time is a little scary, so this is how I worked with him. This is Turbo, and his parents got me that Starbucks drink, thank you very much. For the bath, he was actually really, really good, and for the most part, he just kind of like leisured on the tub. I made sure to give him a lot of positive reinforcement, and then it's time for the blow dryer. Something that you might not know about puppies when they first come, they might be like super good and still the first time because they're frozen in fear. Turbo was fearless when it came to doing his nails and paw pads. I probably spent a good 20 minutes just faking everything I was doing. When it came to his nails, I was able to clip them and then file a few of them, but he wasn't really having it and of course I don't want to push him. I love when corgis are in their puppy phase and their ears don't stand up yet. I just think they look like little bunnies and it's just so adorable. I did very, very light scissor work just for him to get used to it and then I gave him that pumpkin bandana and he's all done. Bye, you turbo! I'm pranking this dog's owner by dyeing their dog's feet pink. Before y'all cancel me, this is Diesel, the mini Australian Shepherd, and let me explain to you what's going on. So Diesel is my client's boyfriend's mom's dog, and they thought it would be funny if I pull a little prank on her and dye Diesel's feet pink. Don't worry though, the dye is literally so temporary that if the dog were to step out on wet grass, it would just come off immediately. It looks like someone previously shaved Diesel, and then so his hair didn't really grow back right. For those of you that don't know, shaving double-coated dogs can bring up like a whole bunch of issues, but I would say the most common is that their hair just doesn't grow back in right. Okay, so now on to the fun little prank that we're doing. So like I said, the dye is like literally so temporary, so it's really not a big deal at all. And of course the dye got all over my hands because would it really be a dye video if I didn't make a complete mess of myself? That was his before, so bye Diesel! This puppy is blind, and this is the first time I've ever worked on a dog that's never had its vision before in its life. I did have to muzzle her for some of this just because she didn't really understand what was going on, and she was growling at me, and I just didn't want to take any risks. I spent a lot of time just chilling with her on the floor and going very, very slow, obviously. And of course, I've worked on dogs that went blind, but Symphony has been blind, and there's so much of a difference. Eventually, this sweet baby did warm up to me and didn't do any of the growling that she was doing before, but there was a few things that I had to be careful with. She didn't like being picked up at all, and this was actually a little more challenging than I expected it to be, because I have to put her on the table and in the tub, and she wouldn't necessarily voluntarily walk on the table, so I had to slowly move one foot at a time to get her to be more comfortable with it. I have high hopes for Symphony, and I'm glad that I was able to experience this. Bye, Symphony! 
I love Golden Retrievers so much because they have such big personalities. Like, what was he trying to do there? I have no idea, but I'm still going to cheer him on. This is my bestie for the resty Dodger, and he's an English Cream Golden Retriever. The only difference between him and a Golden Retriever is that his fur is a different coloring. And why didn't anybody tell me that I had a piece of string on my back? I literally just pulled it off as we're speaking. Like, it's been on my back for eight hours. My dog Raikou seemed like he wanted to join in on the fun, but I had to snatch him up and put him on the floor to make room for Dodger. Dodger was like stalking Raikou from the table like a bird about to pounce on its prey. Because when I put Dodger on the floor, him and Raikou were literally playing like there's no tomorrow. I saw like three triple backflips and they were kicking each other in the face. You just had to be there. And then this happened. Oh! It fell on my dog, of course, and so I had to brush out Dodger's slobber. I do some final finishing touches and give Dodger a Thanksgiving bandana because I'm very thankful for him. Bye, Dodger!